In this lesson, we're going to look at critiquing a published study. So this is all about just being skeptical of what you're reading. They say 87% of all statistics are made up. Yes, I just made that up. So what we're doing is thinking about what should I be paying attention to to determine if what they're telling me is valid or not valid. So first, consider the source. Who paid for the study? Where was the data collected? When was the information collected? Who published the study? Are there any biases that could have happened from the source? Also consider the variable. Um, America's 100 best companies to work for, or top 10 things to make you happy. Who determined what's best? Who determined happy? These are the variables that are being studied. Make sure that you understand how those uh, metrics were considered. So consider, for instance, a bottle of shampoo. It makes hair 60% smoother. Well, how do we know what that means? Smoother than what? Smoother than it was before? How do they measure smoothness? What type of weather? I have naturally curly hair, so smooth for me is different than smooth for somebody else. We should also consider the setup, and this is for an experiment or an observational study. We should be looking at the bias, and bias is favoring a certain outcome in a study. One type of bias is sampling bias, and that's when the sample doesn't accurately represent the population. So if I wanted to look at, you know, kindergartners and taking vitamins and the effect of taking vitamins when they reach high school, then I need to make sure that the population includes kindergartners of all um, socioeconomic levels, all genders, all races. You get the idea. Dropouts. Dropouts are participants who begin a study but fail to complete it. Um, I'm going to skip over processing errors for a second. A non-inherent is similar to a dropout. They don't um, complete the study, but they remain in the study. They just stray from the directions. I'm sure that all of you always read all of the directions, so I'm sure that you would not be a non-adherent. Um, a processing error is an error is just that. It's processing occurs from data being processed, such as typos and things like that. Researcher bias occurs when a researcher influences the result of the study. A response bias occurs when a researcher's behavior or possibly even the way that the question or survey is written causes a participant to alter their response or give an inaccurate response. Participation, participation bias occurs when there is a problem with the participation or lack of participation for the study. And then non-response bias occurs when there's a lack of participation in a self-selected sample from certain segments of a population. When a person refuses to participate in a survey or when a respondent omits questions when answering a survey. So non-response, if they're not answering questions, you could think of them as a non-adherent and that would give you a non-response bias. And then of course, consider the conclusion. Do the data support the conclusion, or did they jump to a conclusion that wasn't supported by data? Do the results present the whole picture or just a part of the picture? Could other conclusions have been drawn from that data? Could there be other reasons, confounding variables for the same conclusion? Does the study have any practical applications? Let's put it all together and take a look at an observational study and see if we can determine the answers to these questions together. So we have a survey conducted from September 15th to October 10th, 2017 by Gallup and Northeastern University. 73% of Americans surveyed say artificial intelligence will eliminate more jobs than it creates. Results were based on a male survey of 3,297 Americans over the age of 18. So what is the population being studied? So remember the population is the whole group. The whole group would be Americans, and specifically Americans over the age of 18. Now, what is the sample? The sample, again, is the group that we actually talk to, and that is the 3,297 Americans over the age of 18. 
What are the sample statistics? Well, the sample statistics are statistics related to the sample. And that's the 73%. Now, how do we know that? Because it says of Americans surveyed. So it's not of the population, it's of the sample. And then describe at least two potential sources of bias. Well, here's a few. Participation bias, many likely didn't return the survey. Um, obviously, if they only got 3,297 back, we don't know how many they sent out. Non-response bias, those without mailing addresses were not included. And researcher bias, if questions, um, if biased questions were written. So we don't know any of that for sure, but those are potential sources. Up next, we're going to start chapter two and take a look at frequency distributions.